Hi, this is a video trip report for deadheading the middle fork of the Salmon River on July 19th, 2021. The flow is about 1.65 feet. And what a deadhead is, is it's the opportunity to get the boats down to Indian Creek for your launch date. So both private and commercial are allowed to get these deadhead permits. You have to get the permit to do this, but this allows one person per boat to get the boats down. That saves from flying boats in and saves from flying coolers and whatever you want to bring in what we do a lot of times is just row the empty boats down and fly a lot of the equipment and all of our people of course in indian creek so again this is a permit anybody can get we do it commercially a lot because the trip from indian creek down is really wonderful but this first 25 miles is pretty brutal at low water the key to a deadhead is you have to do it in one day so here i'm going down the ramp one of the key things here is having your oars sort of in a safe place a lot of people People hold on to their oars and they hit a rock down there and they snap. And so I just put them up uh, on the front of my boat and, and let it ride and then pull them out when I need them. And you could, a lot of people lower the boats down the ramp with ropes, which is great. Uh, if you have four or five people on a medium weighted raft, it's not a big deal. So here we are at First Bend Rapid. This is just right below the put, put in. This is the first thing you're going to see. And it's a technical rapid. It's, there's nothing really here that's going to mess you up but you might get stuck a few times and kind of bounce your way down. And, and a lot of us that do this, this is our first time rowing in a few months possibly. And this is just a good warm up. I make mistakes here all the time. So it's okay if you do, uh, but it's just going to give you a sense of what to expect uh, as you move down the river. And it starts off with this nice little drop and you kind of come out of it with some speed or if you have weight in your boat, I'm going to call it momentum, but whatever you want to call it. And you just got to kind of get over some shallow rocks here. And for me, my boat's a little, my tubes are a little bit soft. My floor is medium soft. So I'm able to kind of slither over some of these shallow rocks that too much effort, like that one of the right of my boat. And you can see ahead of me, there's a sweet boat. And I'm in a pretty light 15 foot raft here. This is a pretty easy boat to deadhead. That's PFDs in the front, I'm sitting on the cooler. It's a smaller boat. Uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward to deadhead. That sweep boat's a 20 or sometimes are 22, 24 foot boats and wider. And they do really well on these low water trips. And it kind of doesn't make sense. But one of the reasons is they sit pretty high. And also because the sweep boat driver's standing up, they get a much clearer vision of where to go. And those sweep arms are much bigger than our oars. They have a, so much control over the boat, it's surprising. So the sweep boats typically go faster and do better than the ore boats on the deadheads. So if you see a sweep boat out there on the, you know, you want to, if it's behind you, just kind of be cognizant that they can't really eddy out and they're going to move faster than you. So it's a really helpful thing and a good idea to sort of eddy out and let the sweep boat pass. You can see that sweep boat's already picked up some distance on us just in this short section of rapids. And first bend is just, it's just a fun little rapid here. Lots of tight little moves and just again, a nice warm up for what's to come downstream. And in the front of the boat, you'll see my dog Pippin. This is her first whitewater trip. So she's kind of checking it out, trying to figure out what's going on. And she did, she did really well. Good job Pippin. So here we are heading into the next section of rapids. This is the entrance of Murph's Hole. And again, it's just shallow. You can see shallow rocks. I'm going to kind of bounce over that one. And I'm just kind of making my way through this rock dodging exercise. And the key here, I think, is to set up well for rapids. Uh, push when you can. Push yourself over things. And if your boat's soft, you'll go over rocks. And this technique I call spin to win. And I'll show an example down below. But you basically, if you put your, put your bow up on something, start spinning the boat around, bring the stern around at least past the rock, and try to use that angular momentum to keep the boat going. So I'll show you some examples downstream. But again, the keys to this are just, you know, right now I'm setting up. I don't try to pull too often, but being in the right spot is important. And then once you get to the right spot, trying to push over things, and you can see I'm setting up, and now I'm going to try to push, 
and I may hit these rocks. And so if I just push the wall, my boat is a little bit soft, it'll push over the top. Again, there's a rock right there in front of me. I can push over it. It's not a big deal. And as much as you can, avoid pulling strokes. Now, I'm pulling here because I want to get left of these rocks. So I'll pull to get position. And Brody will push the whole thing. Some people push. Brody's the boat in front of me. He'll push everything. I'll use a pull stroke to get in position. And then once I'm set up, I'll turn. And I'll start pushing over the rocks I see in front of me. To me, this is really fun boating. I love low water boating. It's, it's really challenging, it's technical, and generally the consequence is just getting stuck, right? On, on bigger rapids, a lot of times the consequence is wrapping, flipping, getting beat down in a hole. And at low volume, it's just the consequences you get stuck. And that rock right there forms Murph's Hole, a high water, one of the most dangerous spots on the Middle Fork. At low water, it's pretty easy to move to the left. Here we are at, at TP hole. This is my, one of my favorite moves. There is a move to the right here, but you're probably gonna get stuck. And as the water drops to the one fives, the move on the right, you just can't make it. And so there's a really fun technical move between these two rocks over here. So you can see right in front of me, there is a way to get over that, but you're almost definitely gonna get stuck over there. But there's this beautiful technical move right there. You end up hitting this wall, but I love this move. And again, it's good to practice in the one sixes because in the one fives you kind of have to go that way. Here we are heading into Doors Rock and another shallow entrance. Uh, this is of course tricky and I'm going to try to keep pushing as much as I can to push myself over the shallow rocks. Here I don't need to pull to get my, my position. I can push a bunch, push pa past that rock on the right and now drive right to keep going over a lot of the rocks. Now that was the entrance. Doors Rock is a tricky one on a low flow. And you have to go start on the right, go left, and then back right pretty hard. It's, it's a challenging move. And it's nice to know ahead of time what you're supposed to do uh, so you're not caught, caught stuck somewhere. So I'm gonna try, I'm starting sort of right here and I'm gonna drive to the left because I have to get left of that big rock down there in the middle of the river. So now I'm gonna slow my momentum down and get back to the left. Now you wanna make it early to the left because then you have to drive back right. So the earlier you get left, the sooner you can start driving back to the right. And what happens is a lot of people don't start soon enough and they end up plastered on these rocks on the left like that rock there, or those rocks right in front of me. And especially at lower flow. Again, you have to make these moves really early. Get yourself, make the move really early so you can stop your momentum and then drive back the other way. Now this is one of the more difficult rapids. It doesn't look that hard. It's called pinball. It's just really shallow and there's a lot of dead ends. And the only advice I have is to go left and stay left. You're gonna be tempted to go middle and you might end up middle, but you really want to go left. And I'm going very aggressively left. There's a high left channel here. I don't mind pushing hard left and maybe getting stuck on that rock. There's one channel just to the right of there that's probably a little bit easier. Um, I should be going, the, I probably should have gone the one right, but I made it far left. And now you're tempted to keep, get out in the current sometimes. Like, oh, maybe I'll shoot some of those rocks. And you really want to stay down the left side here. There's a lot of dead ends in the middle of the river here. A lot of places you'll get stuck for a long time. So the key to pinball is just kind of get yourself to the left and then stay left. And this little channel down here, there's no, there's that rock right in the way. There's no easy solution. Uh, you just kind of got to fight your way through here. You're probably going to get stuck a little bit, uh, which means pulling on the oars or potentially just get out for a second and push your butt off. But we usually when you get stuck here, it's not that bad. Yep. 
And then once you're past this little dog leg at the end, it's just kind of fun floating here down. Again, still shallow, and those rocks on the left, if you have momentum taking you left, you'll get stuck on those rocks for a while. But uh, just get right down here once you're past that dog leg, and things are pretty nice. So this is the next morning, and we camped out at Gardell's. You're allowed to, as long as you do your deadhead in 24 hours, and you get the permit in advance, you can launch the night before. And so here, this is the first rapid of the day, sulfur slide. And this one's tricky. This one's one of the harder ones on the upper section. And a good place to go here is left, but then you want to get back right pretty quick. So I usually hit that rock a little bit to slow myself down and draw myself to the right. And you're just going to go over some of these rocks. And in this next bit, there's a middle, right, and left line. I've heard a lot of different theories. I just go middle, and I get stuck sometimes. This is middle right here, drift right into these rocks. Some people go left here and do great. Some people go right here. This middle line works for me. If, you're, if your boat is soft, you'll make it through nicely. And just a lot of shallow rocks here to get stuck on. If you're, if you're in a small 12-foot boat that's overloaded, you're going to get stuck in here, right? The 18-foot boats that are normally loaded do pretty well. But this is a place where small boats are probably going to get stuck. Right after sulfur slide is lower sulfur slide. And this is one of the most difficult spots on the river. It's this really shallow entrance here. And you have to drive really hard right in these shallows. And it's just hard to do. Right through here, you got to get right all those rocks on the left i've been stuck on for like a lot of time in the past before i did pretty well here again because i'm in a light 15. Uh, a week later i did this in the 18. i didn't do so well so the key here is having a light boat um, and having it soft and uh, just expecting that one to get stuck somewhere the next big rapid is ram's horn uh, this one's pretty straightforward but if you get caught on one of these entrance rocks, it's hard to build momentum or speed to the left. So you really want to kind of negotiate these shallow rocks, which is, again, easy to do if you're floating your boat's a bit soft. Just I point my boat left. You can see I'm not rowing that much. I'm just kind of floating over these shallow things. I know where I have to end up. And shipping here is key. If you don't ship, you're going to you're gonna struggle a little bit. I, I really believe that. So having a good proper oar shipping, which means blades forward, not pulling the oars in, it's sort of key right there. Shipping is huge. You can slam into the rocks if you want. It's typically not a big deal to slam into rocks, as long as it's not too hard. Um, and it's inevitable on this upper section, the low water, you're going to slam into rocks. Now we're at one of the more difficult rapids, uh, one of the most difficult spots, which is Hell's Half Mile. And this entrance is just brutal. Here, he thinks he made it, but he didn't. And almost everybody in these lower flows gets stuck right there. The only way to make this move where he went, he took, there's a, there's a, there's a line to the right of here. So there's a right line and a left line. I'm going to call where he went the left line is to somehow go in there with tons of momentum or speed and have your boat pretty soft. The, the rock he's on sticks most boats. And you can just see, you know, he's being thoughtful about getting off. This is smart because once you get off, there's rapids down below and tons more places to get stuck. And so one thing you want to do when you're getting your boat unstuck is, again, take your time, be thoughtful, and be ready to go for when it comes off so you can make your next move. And he's able to just sort of like use the oars, push in the water. That is really well done. And now he's set up to make these next moves below down here. And here helps Hell's Half Mile. This is just the beginning uh, you're going to kind of make your way through some rocks here and there's a really tough move you have to drive really hard left for. So he's going to make it down this part through here. And right as you pass that big boulder, you really need to start pushing left. And this is a move you can't really pull left. You kind of have to point your boat to the left and push left here. So he's looking for that move now, and now he needs to just really start pushing. He's looking upstream to check on us. But now it's time to drive hard left to make the move that we'll show here in a second. So here's Nick, he's stuck, same thing. Uh, it's just it's just tough. And 
he's going to try some different ways of getting off. And one way is just getting in the bow. The rock's on where he was sitting. So moving himself to the bow is going to help put less weight on that rock. And just pull on some straps, pull on some things, and just kind of jump up and down. That's one thing that helps. Now, he did have a strap just break, so he, <laughs> he has to retie it. But one thing, too, when he's up there, if the bow comes off, he has to be able to quickly get to his oars. And so, you know, he needs to be well set up so as soon as it comes off, he can start rowing again because if it takes him time to get back to rowing, he's going to float downstream and get stuck somewhere that's potentially worse. But I like here one big thing is he's taking his time. He's not in any rush. He's tying things in correctly. He's being thoughtful. Uh, we use the term go slow to go fast. You know, take your time, do things right. Don't be in a hurry and trip over something and get hurt to go fast. And this is pretty common. Just put a put an oar blade in the water and pull on it, spin the boat off. Looks, he's looking downstream to see what's coming up. And as soon as he gets off, he's ready to grab that oar and make the rest of the moves. So those last two boats were loaded down to 18s. Not super heavy, but medium heavy 18-foot boats. I'm in a lighter 15-foot boat. And I'm going to try the right line. There's that rock right in front of me that's sticking out. They went left. I'm going to try to get over here on the right. And the right is just different. Uh, there's different ways to get over to the right. I got stuck even before getting in. Uh, luckily, this boat's pretty light, so I can just pull it off with the oars. But there's this channel right here. I'm going to get the boat stuck up on that left rock. But that channel right there is the right channel. And it does, especially as the water drops, I think this right channel is the way to go. But as you can see, it's hard to get over there. And even if you make it, you're probably going to get stuck over there somewhere. So I know right away I'm going to need to get out. Like I could goof around with other things, but... I just jump out real quick, move the bow over, and jump on. I have my oars, my blades up on the boat so that when the boat comes off, the oar doesn't smack a rock and hit me or smack a rock and break. I can quickly grab the, the, the oars. It's, I think it's really important once you get stuck, get your blades up on the boat again so that they're not flapping around in the water and causing some other kind of problem. So this is this little rock garden. It, this is tricky. This is a tricky spot too. Again, having your, I've said this over and over, having your boat soft, having the floor a bit soft allows you to ride over some of these shallow rocks. And then once you pass that big boulder on the right, you really want to start thinking about getting left. And you can see Brody down there in the eddy waiting. There's a, just a move that requires some momentum and you're getting to the left to get past it. So right here, right behind these rocks, driving left. Otherwise, you're going to get super perched on those rocks to my right. It's a super doable move. You just kind of need to know it's there. So when you finish the initial part and pass that boulder, you can start driving to the left. And then below here, you have options. There's a couple of ways to run the bottom of Hell's Half Mile. This part's really fun. At this point, you pass the hardest part. It's not to mean you're not, you could still get stuck down here. There's not, it's not to say you're not going to get stuck because you may, but like the hardest parts of pass, those two kind of crux moves. Uh, at this spot right here, you can go either right or left of this rock. And then this is just good, clean fun. After the main part of Hell's Half Mile, there's these really fun shoots down below here. They're technically interesting, and the key to them, I think, is oar shipping. You can see I'm shipping my right oar. This is a proper ship. Hand back, blade forward. Same thing I'm shipping here on the left. If you bring your oar 
in towards your body or handle towards your body and the blade's still sticking out in either place, you're gonna lose an oar. The oar's gonna hit that rock or something. And so proper form, in my opinion, is shipping with blade forward. And that's for a number of reasons. Uh, one of them is that, so when you pass the rock, and you're, if your blade's forward, you're, you can put the blade right in the eddy behind the rock and be ready to go. So you can see down here in this last part, I'm gonna take some time to set up. I'm gonna pull here because I want to be pretty close to this rock on the left. I know once I get in there, I'm going to have limited use of my oars. So I want to set up really well here. I'm going to do this left ship, then switch to a right ship, and then do both for a second and be ready to go. I really feel like this shipping is key to good rowing. But that's just an opinion. You can take it or leave it. And then you'll see, since it's a hard rapid, all of our boats are sort of regrouped. They're waiting for me on the last boat. And we'll keep going down after this. Next up is Velvet Falls. And this is the entrance. The entrance, I think, is the hardest part. The falls itself, my, my GoPro battery died right before the falls. And the, the falls itself is pretty straightforward. There's two lines here. There's a far left line. So you could drive left right now, go through those shallows you see over there. That line goes, you're just probably going to get stuck. The cleanest line is to start, I get stuck on this little rock here, is to start pretty far right over here where the current goes and then pull or push. I usually do on a pull, so start pretty far right as the water drops even more right and then drive for the center channel. That channel right in front of me dead end, so you don't want to go through there. You want to drive and push hard and go through this center channel right here. Now again, that far left channel does go if you can get over there. It's just shallow and you're probably gonna get stuck. This is the cleanest line through those rocks. And then so after trail flat, the next rapid, I call this avalanche atolls. Some people call this the upper chutes as a bunch of different names. It's just shallow and tough. The river spreads out here. There is a specific line, this is it. And kind of the crux to me is in this entrance. There's an exact spot here where you just want to be pushing hard left right here. So you maybe get in that eddy water on the left and miss this rock on the right. Most boats will perch on that rock on the right. No big deal. Just jump out, get off. I do what's called the spin to win. I hit it sideways and I started spinning the boat and I just keep spinning it around and my angular momentum carries me around. So a lot of you are going to get stuck there. I get stuck there all the time. It's just part of it. And then once you get done, there's just more of this. And your goal here is just to stay in the deepest water and just keep your momentum going downstream. And uh, there's it's hard to explain what the line is, but you saw back there I entered kind of middle-ish, and then I'm just going to kind of stay left here. And this is where if, you're, if your boats are sinking in the water, like, like you have a 12-foot boat, it's overloaded, it's deep in the water, it's pumped up, you're gonna get stuck a lot. Like the bigger your boat here, like this 18 foot boat in front of me has a lot of weight in front of it. A big boat helps here. The sweet boats do fine here because they're so big and, and they, they don't sink very deep in the water. The more you sink in the water, the more struggles you're gonna have in this rapid and more rapids like this. There's one more section of this just sort of shallow wide part called avalanche atolls right here. It's pretty straightforward, but as the water drops and the, the deeper your boat sinks in the water, the more you're gonna get stuck. So try not to get too frustrated here. It's just part of the game. I have a pretty good line again, because I know what I'm doing and I have a pretty light boat that, that's pretty soft. You can see I'm just going right over the shallow rocks. Now this is the one that most people are nervous about. This is the chutes. I'm gonna take the right line in the entrance. The entrance is sort of the crux. There's also a left line. If you look over there against that wall, I've never gone left, but people do. They just do slam into that wall pretty hard. To go right, you really wanna drive. See, I'm driving to the right pretty hard. You're likely to get stuck right there on that rock. I got pretty lucky here. I kind of bounced off of it. So I'm gonna to choose to drive right because I know that works as the water gets lower and lower. Again, there's a far left line that I've heard about people doing. I've seen them do it. I've just never done it. Um, after that, you gotta get left of this rock 
and this is just now a slalom. One of my favorite moves here is hitting this rock on the right. This move is really hard, but if you hit the rock on the right, it slows your dance your momentum down, and it spins you and gets you going to the right. So I like just hitting a piece of that rock and then kind of spinning off of it. And now I could keep going downstream. The end of it is a little bit easier than the rest, but in the, when I'm in a small easy boat, I'm gonna pull over here, stop, and in case somebody in a bigger boat, one of the 18 foot boat gets super stuck, I can walk up there and help them out. So that's me just saying, hey, you guys are good to go, and I'm here to help you if you need help. Another really tough shallows is just below the chutes. This is called lower chutes. And as you can see, the river is really wide here. These are some of the toughest spots. And this is just sort of a, a mad scramble down the right side, doing the best you can. If, you, if your boat, I've talked about this before. If your boat is deep in the water, you're gonna struggle here. This is gonna take you a long time. So those of you that take small boats and overload them, this is gonna take you a long, long time. This is where having a big boat really helps. So you can go over a lot of these shallow rocks. Now, I know the line here, which helps, but in general, it's just right. I mean, most people can read and run this. Um, I've done this a bunch. I've been stuck here a bunch. I know some of these rocks. Uh, there's a couple ways you can do some of these individual moves, but really the key here is sitting high in the water and keeping the boat going downstream. So I made that move, but now I need to get back right uh, it's just tough and I'm gonna get stuck here. I'm sure. Yep And this is just part of it again. This is a light 15 if you're in it If you have the same weight in a 12 foot boat, it's gonna be harder if you have the same weight in an 18 foot boat This one's gonna be easier. So I this is where I suggest having a big boat It doesn't look like you want a big boat But but you really do to help get through some of these some of these tough spots And the key here is just taking your time now. I'm backwards and my goal is to just keep this thing moving downstream over shallow rocks. I'm going to go over a lot of shallow rocks here and choose, you know, which channel to go. And good ore management here is super important. This is where if you have an ore go downstream and hit a rock, you could break it, you could hit yourself in the head. This is where just like being really thoughtful about placing your oars in the water, trying not to put your ore downstream of the boat. Right? If you get sideways, be very cautious of that downstream ore and just having good ore management so you don't slam into something. And just taking your time, just going into the lower chutes, knowing, hey, I'm going to be here for 15, 20 minutes. This is just one of the more brief brutal places on the river and going do when I say go slow to go fast like don't get hurt here you know just take your time have good good footwear jump out when you need to and know that you're gonna get stuck a few places and just don't get too upset about it just be like yeah I'm getting stuck and I'm gonna deal with it some shallow rocks I'm just gonna go over right there on the left and the final part right here does have some shallow rocks as well so I know to try to build some momentum here and drive a little bit right to kind of power power over these last few shallow bits So the next rapid up, the next big rapid, there's a few rapids in between, but the next big rapid is Upper Powerhouse. And this is just has a really tricky shallow entrance like a lot of them do. There's an exact line here. Uh, that if, you, if you go through this exact line, you'll make it. If not, you'll get stuck. It's not a big deal. Just get yourself unstuck. But you kind of just weave your way. The normal line, this is the normal line in most flows, through all these rocks and just deal with some of these shallow rocks. If you're in a, again, a loaded down, 
boat for its size, you're going to get stuck here a lot. And it's a little intimidating. Getting stuck at the top of a rapid like this is just intimidating. You, you don't, nobody wants to do it, especially with people watching. You know, PG people are behind you watching, but you just kind of do it, take your time, get undone. And once you're past the entrance, like a lot of the rapids, the rest of it's pretty straightforward. So this is the end of, of Upper Powerhouse, and there's a lot of ways you can go here. I'm not saying this is the best way. This is just the way that I go. I kind of like this move to start right and then use this eddy water to get back left. I don't think everybody does this. This is just a thing I like doing, but there's quite a few different options here. I'm not sure mine is the best one, but it works for me. All right, so soon after upper powerhouse, this is lower powerhouse, and it's just fun. It's a good rapid. The crux here is, sorry, the crux is here at the beginning. Uh, I like to go right of this rock, but then drive back left, knowing there's a rock in between. So it's not too bad right now. I can kind of you can see that rock just to my left. I kind of hit it. At lower water, that rock becomes more of a problem. So this move, you know, to get, through that little slalom of rocks is key and, and I've seen a few boats really pin there seen a drift boat pinned in there before it's pretty nasty especially as the water drops and the rest of it down below here it's challenging but it channelizes well and it's just good clean fun So after all that fun, uh, lower powerhouse ends with just this wall shot. Your goal is to avoid this right wall. And you could hit it. It's not a big deal. You just don't really want to pop a boat right now. And you could, you'd could, you probably be fine hitting it, but better safe than sorry. You could also break an oar slamming into it. So I try to pull off this wall. And this big eddy is a great place to regroup. So what I'll tell people, a lot of people is, hey, let's all, you know, after, especially after uh, the shoots, you know, let's all kind of go down and we'll all regroup at the bottom of lower powerhouse. So after that, there's some fun shallows. There's a lot of shallows near Sheep Eater. And the next rapid I think is a real problem for people is here's Greyhound. There's this big rock right here and you can see my friend Stillman in front of me, he went left. I like to go right because as it drops, that left channel goes away. So this right channel always goes. It's a difficult move to get right, um, but I like practicing it. 
And then even after that, you'll see there's a bunch of rocks here that you get pinned on. So you need to kind of carry some momentum through here to power through uh, these rocks. And we're a little bit close. Our boat spacing was a little bit too tight for a rapid like this. So I just slowed down. I wish I wish I had started a little bit further away to give him some more space, but it worked out fine. Uh, but that's a tough spot. This is another classically hard spot. This is artillery number three. There's other names for it. That big rock in front of me, people carry momentum into and slam, slam into. So I slow down here. I use the eddy water on the right to slow down. And I pull this move personally and take my time. There's a lot of sweet boats slam into that rock and a lot of ore boats too. So if you if you're if you're dumb you dump your momentum ahead of time and pull, it's a nice way to make it through that channel. And then after here is a nasty little rock garden. There's a big rock down there. It's almost my bow, right in my bow, that big rock right in front of me. You want to get left of that rock, but as soon as you pass it, you want to drive back right. There's a lot of places here you can get really stuck. So I'm going to go down, pass it to the left, but I'm starting to think about how can I start building left to right momentum so I can go right just past it. And you can see down to my left, there's a bunch of dead end rocks. And so it's not super low water. I'm able to push over there, but as it gets lower, it's harder to make that move. And then we're pretty much done with the deadhead here. This is the entrance of Lake Creek Rapid and at low water, not a big deal. At least this part isn't a big deal. This rapid formed in 2006 when Lake Creek blew out. And there was a rapid here, but it looks massively different than it used to. And so it changes all the time. You know, the river every year, the river's scouring out like a slightly different path. So this is what it looks like in 2021. It's probably going to look a little bit different every year after this. Uh, there's a big hole at higher flows on the right here and just kind of a little pour over right now. So I like to just go right of it to avoid it. I think the hardest part of Lake Creek is this part, the second part. These shallows are just tough. There's some weirdly placed rocks, especially as the water gets lower. And you want to drive right to left and just power over these shallow rocks. And a lot of boats get stuck in here just because they don't know where to go and they're not carrying momentum. So you definitely want to carry momentum through here. And then these shallows down here are also pretty tricky. You can, there's a, I think there's a rock in the middle of these shallows. You can go right or left of them. As the water drops, I generally go right. So I'm going to point my boat to the right and just practice driving right of this rock. And you'll see a lot of boats stuck in here too. That's the rock right there to my left. You want to get to the right of that or left of it. And the last rapid is pistol. That's the last rapid coming up here around a couple bends. And at low water, you have to take the main left channel. So it, there's an island here. At higher flows, there's a right cheat line. You have to go left. And there's a rock. I think people call it the can opener rock. It puts a holes in a lot of boats. You have to go either right or left of it. You have to make a choice ahead of time. This is where scouting. You can pull over right down here in this eddy here. Walk up to the, to the trail and scout. You can check it out. But I'm going to choose to go right. I think left is the easier move. Uh, right is just fun for me. It's just challenging to do. And there's more water on the right. It's a bigger drop. So I'm showing you the right line of the left side. Um, you can also just make your way down the left and do the left channel. Again, worth scouting. Definitely want to check this out. Those of you that want to do the right line, I think it's key to dump momentum. So you see that I'm pulling. I'm kind of making, I'm building left to right momentum right now. I'm slowing myself down. I'm not so far right that I'm getting, I'm hitting those rocks on the right. If you hit those rocks on the right and start spinning, you're going to be in trouble. So I'm being careful not to get too far right. And then once I know I've made it, I put my bow down. It's a pretty good drop. And it kind of wanted to suck me in there for a second, uh, but I was fine. So I love catching these eddies and pistols, so I'm going to push over and 
catch this little eddy and my friend Stillman's behind me he's taking the left line so you can see if you look up on the left channel there you can see the right channel from here too the left channel there's that rock the water's going over it pops a lot of boats again you want to go right or left of it I just went right uh, and then Stillman's gonna take this 18 foot boat to the left and the sweep boats can go left too at this flow so there's plenty of room you just kind of make your way over there go through straight and you want to ship your oars and at least your left oar and it's pretty straightforward so I'd suggest most people try the left line but if you haven't done it it doesn't take that long to scout you know pull over upstream walk the trail scout it and then at this flow pistols this lower part isn't super hard uh, but it's challenging. It's a classic S turn, and there's just some really cool eddies to catch. So I'm going to push from that river right eddy over to this river left eddy. I love this move right here. Catch the eddy at the top, cross the eddy line, catch this one. And from here, you can slide over pretty easy over to the river right eddy below here. So it's a fun little course just to practice eddy catching. So those are some of the major places on deadheading the middle fork at 1.65 feet. As always, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and leave a comment if you have questions. If you want to add something, please do. Think about subscribing and um, yep, see you in the next one. Thanks.